short copper and short copper and red quizzle. What am I missing? sad mama. I just dropped Jordan off at the airport. She was here for a visit for a week and this week just went way too fast. Way too fast. Look at me like ah oh, I already miss her so much so what do I have to do? I have to go make myself feel better by going and doing a little shopping at Goodwill. I actually we didn't go to a Goodwill in Las Vegas all week. We went out to Arizona. We never went, we never went anywhere but dog junkies and a desert. Into, like we just didn't shop like we thought we were gonna shop this week. Very strange. We did a bunch of fun stuff. Uh, we went to Area 15 and like their new Omega Mart and we went to the Mob Museum and had fun that way, but it was very, it was an odd week. And I don't know when she'll ever be out here for that amount of time again. So anyway, I'm rambling. It's time to go inside and go get shop done. So let's go do that. Let's go get shop done. All right, let's get in here and go see what we can find. Uh, green tags. Green tags are 50%. And I think this is going to be our lucky card today. That one right there. Ooh, they are actually really busy tonight for some reason. I think these are like a Target brand, the home brand. This looks like it is a Bavarian bowl, probably hand-painted. It is German. I'm trying to see what that says. Ves... Ves something. Right? There. Can't quite make it out. Pretty bowl. But we're going to leave it. And then there's a Mr. Steak platter. It is chipped, but I'm just curious who makes the Mr. Steak platter. It's a Triumph made in USA. Poor Mr. Steak platter. What is really odd is there is no music playing whatsoever, which is just a very strange thing. Smuckers Sundays, any day. Pretty divided dish. Okay. This is one of those balls that you would put like uh, flowers or like a rose in. Got a whole little lump of uh, shot glasses and a little wooden thing there. Okay. What are you? We don't know because you're covered up by a label. It's nothing that exciting. This is recycled glass. Seeing more and more recycled glass now. It would be half price because green is the color. A little bigger than I want to ship, and it is, no, I guess it's not scratched. Uh, don't really have room for it down at the booth either. So we're gonna leave that one. All right, I see a cool looking bowl with a fish on the inside. Oh, it's a Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel fooled me. I thought maybe it was something like Limoges, but it is not, it is Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel stuff can sell okay, but usually it's a lower end kind of thing. Oh, there they are again. I can never ever get past them. This is interesting because that is Moon and Stars. And it's a drink dispenser, which is a fairly modern thing. Huh. 
pause to read. Not sure about that one either. This is a butter dish missing its top, and I think I remember it had a top uh, last time I was here. I'm trying to think, a couple weeks ago. All right, let's check out the glasses. Nice, sturdy glasses. I'm not seeing anything too exciting. These are kind of cool, these. Uh, Tequila Cazadoras glasses. Look how thick they are down at the bottom. And they have the big deer on them. Not exciting enough to uh, pick up today, though. What are these? Take a peek. These have little, like, Sherlock Holmes on them. And then there's a, a CV. Huh. And there are... There's three of them. I'm intrigued just because I don't know. I don't know who done them. You know, I think if there was four, I'd probably get them, but I'm going to leave those. And then these have a really pretty etch on them. I don't know if that's coming through. I think it is. These are really, there's, there's a pair of these. You know what? Those are just pretty enough that for 69 cents each I'm gonna grab them. Let's see what these guys are. They have little daisies on them. I do think these are vintage but nothing exciting enough to uh, put in my cart today. All right moving on here. Ooh, this is like a glass that we would consider sick glass. See the difference in the color? This has a lot of stuff on it and I don't know if that will ever come clean it might it might but it's the kind of thing I just don't spend time on unless it's something very rare and valuable because you have to spend time on it those are 25th anniversary glasses all right well there's not a whole lot here in the mug section today but we will take a peek See if there's anything worth buying, as usual. These are just, they're like, uh, like beehive martini glasses. Are those martini or margarita? Ooh. I'm thinking martini. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't quite big enough for a margarita. Like this is margarita size. Beautiful glass. I wish there was two of those. Ooh. Now see, I think this is that meant to look like glowy glass, but it's not. Uh, this is hand-blown glass out of Mexico. Not worth a whole bunch. Okay, let's see. It is really, really weird not to have any music in the background, I gotta tell you. I'm not gonna complain. It's just weird. That looks like, um, I can't remember the name of the company now, but that is cracked, so we can't get it. But let me see. I've got to, I've got to check or it's just going to bug the heck out of me. I'll put it right back the way I found it. I promise. Oh, it's not what I thought it was. This is a Julie... Julie something or Ju or or is it Julio by oh my goodness I can't can't make it out it's pretty though okay yeah nothing special in the mugs today Now we are over in the dishes, and I spotted this. And again, price tag is right over the mark. So let's just give it a quick peel and see. It is 
goodness. Why can't I read any of these today? It says something though. As long as you put it back and the little code is scannable. This has some age on it. Oh, I just saw that big, big chip. So we can't get that. Otherwise I was gonna grab it for 99 cents and figure out who it was. Cause sometimes I just like to do that. I'd rather like get it and research it at home versus trying to look it up here in the store for that, you know, it's just 99 cents, like why not? These are, I find these, I think they're for holding silverware, right? And I usually find them in smaller versions. So these are like quite heavy duty. Unless I'm thinking of something else, but I don't think so. These are kind of nice. They are Sonoma Home Goods in the garden. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. I was like, I need to make my own music. So even when you guys don't hear me, I'm humming in my head while I shop. <laughs> oh, plastic. Not pottery. That's an interesting bowl. Look at that. What is the purpose of that? I don't know, it's that really, um, it's that really weird, cheap ceramic that just chips like at the drop of a hat. Let's see who makes this one. Horizon. Oh, it is a treasure craft. Look at that. I thought it looked like it might be. Treasure craft. Horizon. It's $4.99. I do love me some treasure craft. So I'm going to pick that up. All right, we're going to skip over here to the wood section because it's just a little crowded everywhere else. This is just an interesting... Oh, it was a... Oh, it was a calendar towel that somebody stretched onto this board. I'm looking for a year. I don't see what year it was. But that's what that is. They just stretched it onto a board. Okay. Short copper and short copper and and quizzle. What am I missing? I don't know. I just don't know. Ciao. All right. I expected that they would have restocked a little bit more after the weekend. It is a Monday as I am filming this. I kind of need some of this for my, um, my shipping board, but this isn't wide enough. I need a wider. I need a wider one. Oh look, tall cream. You can go over here with the short copper antiquos. <laughs> All righty then. I still have no idea. Just have no idea. This is a cribbage board, missing all of its cribbage, cribbagey parts. Establish. 1946 horn, macrylis made in USA, just kind of a, a plain one. And it is missing. It's missing all its goodies. Okay. Wow, it could be a light trip. Have a neat little um, cabinet thing here. Hmm, it's got shelves on one side and not on the other. I don't really have a place for it. Hmm. And then we have a abandoned cart. Apparently this was not somebody's lucky cart. And so there it is. Oh, we got some letters. 
I'm still looking for, actually, I think I found my H and my E. I think I'm still looking for maybe one more T. I can't remember now. I do like this E. I also cannot remember which of my letters are plain and I need to put something snazzier. So I'm going to have to like take a picture of my letters and figure that out. Okay. I am kind of digging the tree down here. I have no place to go with it, but I kind of love it. It is $5.99. Darn it. Wish I had a place to hang a tree. I don't have a lot of wall space in this house. It's uh, been interesting to try and arrange all of my artwork and stuff because I love artwork. I love hanging stuff on the walls and I have a lot of it <laughs> and I'm having to like kind of pick and choose what to put away and what's going to have a home. It's got birds on it, but it's very cheap. That's plastic. It's very cheaply made. Okay. I've got a tin. Who makes you? Who doesn't say? There's an interesting candle holder flower thing. <gasps> oh, it's so broken. That's a shame. Because that was kind of a cool piece. All right, we've got more wall decor. And I think that's it for the metals. Nothing too exciting. I see flamingos. I see fun flamingos. They came from Hobby Lobby for $24.99 originally, got marked down half, so they were being sold for like $12.50, and now they're only $5. I don't understand why they would have been that much, because they're really just... They're just flamingos. I mean, there's really nothing that special about them. Uh, I don't know. And then this is some child's project. Yep, that was, that was Ben. Oh, there we go. I think it's supposed to be an owl. I think Ben C was making an owl. Ceramic Association in Oregon. That's cool. I think that says 69, so 1969, but I don't really do like ashtrays and things. It's not a very exciting piece. These are fairly common. It's old, but they just don't, they just don't bring much. And then this guy is a newer piece. It says Handmade, hand carved in India. Uh, so I thought, oh, I think it's a West Elm. I thought it was wood. I mean, I thought it was, um, it is metal. How can it be hand carved? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can it be hand carved when it's metal? It is a West Elm and it is an owl. So for that reason, I'm going to pick it up, but. I wonder if they just put that label on everything. All right, we'll get him. Let's see, this looks like it's, it's got water in it. It does have water. I don't understand why that's just an empty thing with water in it. And then there's this guy. That's pretty beautiful. It is signed on the bottom. I'm sure it's Mexican blown glass. It does have a little wear right up here. I don't even think that's painted though. I think that's, well, that's painted. Well, I guess it is painted. I don't know quite how I feel about this piece, but I think for $2.99, I can still do pretty good with it. Then I looked up and spotted this right in front of my face. Uh, this is as sharp as it looks. It is crystal, crystal clear, and it is only $10. Oh, this is American Brilliant, 
and we will be grabbing that. Okay, just popping in here to just talk a little bit about this American Brilliant Glass, which is a really exciting find. And I will tell you, most thrift stores sorting, the people sorting don't know the difference between a piece of American Brilliant Glass and just like some contemporary crystal. Uh, but you can know the difference. Number one, the sharpness that is like your number one clue like I'm holding this piece and it feels like it could cut my hand it is so sharp and that's because the technique that was used to cut this glass over a hundred years ago oh gosh it's 2022 so we're talking like a hundred and forty years ago oh, okay it's old glass um, so the American Brilliant period was a period of time when the American glassmakers were trying to compete with the imported European cut glass uh, makers, and they came up with their own versions. Most of it you will never find with a signature or any indicator of who made it because they didn't want the consumer to know that it was made in America. They wanted to fool them into thinking it was the expensive European imports. So this was a period of time where the, and sorry about the noisy birds in the background. Um, so the American glassmakers started to compete uh, with their glass and it was a, uh, it was a world fair Gosh, I don't remember the details. I have them on a whole nother video. Go look for my Untapped Treasures series playlist where I go into much, much greater detail. Uh, but basically, they won some awards for their glass, and this began the American Brilliant period where it became a desirable glass, and now the makers started putting their marks in and all of that good stuff. So, uh, so this is what you need to know. It is sharp 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 and it is also very heavy uh, for its size and it's going to be very thick because it had to be thick for them to make all of these cuts and the cuts were made literally one by one by hand they used water tools i uh, forget what the other um i forget what the other method was but again i have all that in another video uh but anyway really really desirable glass the clarity it, like it just shines it's so clear and beautiful uh, this one that i found does have a little damage up on the sawtooth rim which is not uncommon and it it will detract a little bit from its value but not a whole lot remember this glass is 100 140 years old maybe even a little older so um Collectors can be a little forgiving if there is some damage. And your sharpness is not what you're looking for on the top edge. It's in the pattern itself. So i um, pretty excited about this piece. Stay tuned for the recap, and I tell you what this particular pattern is. All right, let's see what other cool glass goodies are up here. Now that I found that, I do like this candle holder. With the puppy. Is it a puppy or a kitty? I guess it could be either. I think it's supposed to be a kitty though. It's cute. Those are pretty. And then here's another really nice piece. Now this, this is a pressed glass. I don't know quite how old this one is. It's pretty, but it's not quite what I am looking for today. We have a dog in a bag. I wonder if he had more dogs in there with him at some point. Okay. Here is a brass sign. Let's see, does it hang this way? It does, so that's how it's meant to be read. I have no idea even what language that is. Can anybody decipher for me? Because I do not know. Ooh. Whoa, fishy. This is like a brutalist fish. 
ashtray. And I know I said I don't really do ashtrays, but I do do brutalist. Just the design, the brutalist design is kind of brutal. <laughs> I mean, look at that face. So, $3.99, we're going to grab him. And I see this little wood box. That's it doesn't really set in there like it should. I think it is signed on the bottom, but we're going to leave it. We are going to leave it and look at these cute little mice who just say made in China, no name on them. So we will leave those. And look at the little tiger figurine. He looks like one of those masterpiece pieces. Oh, he's made in Mexico, 1981. He has five bucks though, so. I mean, these all look like they're the same maker, all these little animals, but they just, they just don't bring enough to deal with those right now. I have virtually taken a week off, so I have a lot of catching up to do, so I'm gonna be a little bit discriminating tonight. So it's gotta be stuff that either just, I just really love and want to learn more about it. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, or I just, I know exactly what it is and how to get it listed. Okay, there's just some odd stuff here tonight. Lots of collector plates. Somebody's got to rethink a thing to do with collector plates. There's got to be, there's got to be something that can be done with them to repurpose because there's so many of them and I'm just afraid they all end up in the landfill. Kind of a cool candle. Gosh, I remember when these triple wick candles were such a thing and so expensive. But we are a non-candle burning household because of all of our birds and small creatures. All right. A little bit of Christmas, but nothing that we can't live without. So you might have seen that I did grab these because it was just bugging me that I didn't know who the CV was. And I did a little, little, a little quick research there. It's uh, Cor Corvusier. I'll put it up on the screen. Cor Corvusier. Uh, it's a cognac company, and sadly they don't sell for much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put those back over on the shelf. I also picked this up off the cart. They were pulling out. Uh, it's just a little dish by Royal Winton. Old cottage chintz. Really popular pattern. So for only 99 cents, I grabbed that. And now we're going to look through the artificial stuff a little bit. I do like those, but not for $4 each. And I do like this. How much are you? You're two. Oh, you're only a dollar? Yeah, you're missing a lot of beads. Okay. So we're going to leave those. Let's see what else they have. Lots of lemons. Got lots of lemons. Somebody asked me like what my thing is with the fake fruit and the fake food and what I do with it. Well, I used to do a really, really heavy business reselling it until I had to start competing with the uh, Chinese importers who could sell it for almost nothing. Even though, even though mine was the better quality, the true vintage, um, it's just one of those things that they were able to kind of get the search Kind of monopolized and I lost my business on that. I used to get like, you know, $20 for a piece of fruit. It was amazing because people would be buying them for props, for theater, for photography, all that kind of thing. And they, so they wanted some good quality props. So, but I'm still so drawn to that stuff that I can't help myself from picking it up many times. Oh, the plastics are so colorful. But it's very rare that I find anything really worth picking up in the plastics. Although lately I found a few things for personal use. Some little storage containers and such. 
but I don't, don't see really anything today. Sometimes I look, you know, like for Starbucks, tumblers like that and stuff, but nope, nothing in the plastics today. All right, we're gonna look in the mishy mashy section. Let's see if there's anything exciting. Another abandoned cart. Ooh, lots of people didn't have a lucky cart tonight. And nothing calling me from this area. Hmm. Let's see what's on this side. Very important papers. Very important papers inside. Hmm. Kind of like that. Zebra. The dinosaur. Goodness. Got some stamps. Ooh, Halloween stamps. Well, it's kind of a cool desk guy. I'm trying to think that's just a little bit bent. I'm seeing if it would bend back into shape. A product of fantasy and wood. John Pacheco. Huh. There's nothing super exciting about it. It's just a little pen holder and clip. So it's probably going to be like a maybe $12 to $15 piece. So we'll leave it. Is that one of those things where it's like the picture in a picture thing? I think it might be. Oh, this would have held um, CDs. That's old school right there. Um, copyright 1994 by, oops, Glare, Glare, Stephen Schultz and Susan Polish Schultz. Huh. Neat. You had a vintage look to it. Got, you're missing something that used to be stuck there. And again, it's just like a photo album. Nada. Let me just say something for those of you who do the electronics and the video games and such. All I can tell you is I know my son has spent an exorbitant amount of money on wheels. Like he had one and then he needed to upgrade. And it's like, these are like a few hundred dollars to buy new. So uh, if that's your thing, I would definitely give these a look when you're in the thrift stores and see you know, if it's one that's worth the big bucks. All right, I'm just drawn to things with like smiley faces on them like these. This has got to be what? For like baby food? Oh yeah, it's a baby bullet. No, wait, is that for baby food? Or is it, I don't know. See, this is probably one of those things that's worth a whole bunch of money too. Baby bullet. Hmm. But it's not my, it's not my thing. So I'm going to leave it. All right, we're taking a peek in the lamps. Look at those big monsters right there. Holy moly, those need a lot of room to go somewhere. Let's see. One of those big salt lamps. I don't know how those are doing these days, but they want 30 for that one. So. Well, not a whole bunch in the lamps today. All right, we're gonna look a little bit through the smaller art just to see if there's anything kind of stand out. I'm sure I miss stuff just because I don't have the patience to go through it all. I'm sure if you had the patience to go through it all, you could find some real gems, but I don't. <laughs> Except some birds. Oh, these are really sweet birds too. Sani. Just a Sani, $2.99. There's this one, and then there's this one. And so, yes, I do think I have to get the birds. Lots of frames, lots and lots of frames. It's a photograph of, looks like the Grand Canyon. It's kind of cool. All right, Let's see what's behind the little face here. A house is not a home without a dog. I agree. Or a cat. I'll give you cat people that too.
without an animal. Let's just say without an animal. Gotta have an animal. You can go with the bird too. We'll open it up to all genres of animal. I'm okay with that. No discrimination of animals here. Lots of frames, just lots of frames tonight. Lots of just, you know, the kind of cheap art too. Oh, and the like paint party art. I always got to throw that into the Goodwill too. I see an interesting piece back here that is a Hawaii poster. What I'm looking for is to see, is it a reproduction or is it like the real thing? Because some of these Hawaii posters, advertising posters can sell for big bucks. Kon Konyakowski. This is a print. So I'm going to look it up. So there's lots of them listed anywhere from $28 up to like $200, but there's no sold. So we'll leave her behind. Then I pulled out this print here. This is by M. Caracelli. Let's see if that'll focus for you. Oops, lots of glare, lots of glare. Focus, focus, focus. Okay, I'm, I'm trying the little, it's not easy, there we go. It's not easy one-handed trying to boop the screen. There we go. M. Caracelli. Um, these sell for about $15 to $20, sadly. So not something we can pick up either, but it's a really pretty print. I am just very intrigued by this placemat and napkin set. It is a set of six placemats, napkins, glass coasters, and napkin rings, which the napkin rings are like these pieces. I kind of like it. It's it's it is jute and raffia. It's got a really nice look to it. It looks like somebody was given it as a gift and put it away and never used it and then donated it. So for $6.99, we're gonna grab that. Let's see if there's anything in the pillows that is gonna grab us tonight. I like the look of that one. Not enough to buy it, but I like it. Allen and Roth can be a pretty good brand. These are outdoor pillows, actually, for $3.99 each. I'm going to take a quick peek and see what that brand is selling for. Well, these sell for about $15 to $20 a pillow, and these are in really, really nice condition. So $3.99 each, we're going to grab those. And we are just on the verge of people switching out their outdoor decorations. I like the nativity pillow. That's really cool. It's $1.99. I have to put it away for a while, but I don't think I've ever seen a nativity pillow. So I'm going to grab that one. Okay, tell me what shopping trip would be complete without a plush avocado? Come on. Um, this is a Hug Me food plush. It is $2.99. It's got its original tag. Uh, these sell for like $20 to $35, depending which one. If you find the cherries, those are the ones that everybody's after right now. But the avocado doesn't do half bad, so we're going to pick him up. And then, you know, we have to go through the rest of the plush. Is this, is this copper <gasps> from the fox and the hound? No. Oh, wait. Is that the hound too? Did I just seriously find Todd and Copper? I totally did. I totally found Todd and Copper. One of my favorite movies. Oh my gosh. Favorite characters. I know. Call me sappy. $4.99 each. They are so going in the cart. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of Mickey Mouses out there, so I tend to not pick those up anymore. And uh, Simba kind of like was doing really well for a while. But now there hasn't been like a new, you know, Lion King movie or anything. I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. I'm looking at his tushy tag to see what year maybe this one is. It's a Disney store. Uh, five bucks for Simba. Oh, plush are just so easy to list and sell and ship and Disney's good. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get Simba too just kind of a sucker for some of the Disney ones. But Mickey I can leave behind. I'm just looking at this tushy tag here yet. I don't even know what this creature is. Oh, it's a monkey. 
It's a cute little monkey, but he's not anything exciting. And then we have a, uh, he's an Elmo, but see, he would have had batteries and stuff. So I just, I don't even mess with those. I just don't mess with battery stuff because it's too easy for somebody to replace their non-working one with the working one that you send them. So I stay away from that. And then we have Stitch. Stitch is also $4.99. Somebody just got rid of their whole little Disney plush collection. All right, we'll take you too, Stitch. And I turn around and just make sure there's nothing on this side too, but it looks like that might have been all the plush, unless, ooh, they're moving something around back there. Unless there's something up here. Let's take a quick peek. Nope. Beanie Babies. Definitely don't do Beanie Babies. All right. I don't see anything except BFFs. BFFs puzzle. And a really cool chair. Well, that's a different cart full for me, but you know what? It's still a money cart. So <laughs> I'm going to take it. Oh, you know what I did not look at? I didn't look at the textiles and the blankets, which are right here. So let's do that real quick. Got a nice crocheted flag, Afghan, but it looks, hmm, oh, I thought that had like a hole that wasn't supposed to be there. It's not, it's not done in the greatest quality yarn, so it's very stretched out. The type of yarn they use really matters. Otherwise, I probably would have picked that up because we got, we got 4th of July right around the corner. Come on now. Let's be optimistic. It's almost here. <laughs> summer. Yes. Who's with me? Who wants summer? I just spotted this pair of pillowcases. They are handmade with this really cute Easter pattern. And I think this would be super adorable for somebody who does like a guest room. They're, is it, I'm trying to see if it's, nope, they're together. So two of them for $2.99. I'm going to get those. I was running through just like the uh, little textiles, placemats, linens, and that, that kind of thing. And I spotted these placemats, and I'm pretty sure these are like a Pier 1. There are two sets of four at $3.99 for a set of four. Uh, they're in super great condition. So I'm going to pick those up too. Okay, now I'm really done this time. I'm going to head home to the kiddos and try to put my house back in order after having company for a week. So, headed to the checkout. Oh, I was really hoping they would have brought out another cart, but they didn't. Okay, heading to the checkout.
interesting shopping trip. I think I scored better in the plush than I did in the hard goods, but I did find that really cool piece of American Brilliant. I am pretty excited about that. And um, well, as I'm recording this, I'm hoping that I remembered to pop in and give some more information about American Brilliant back when I found that. If not, I may have to edit this out. But if you're hearing it, then I did it and I figured it out. Hey, I am not technologically uh, savvy so much. I can find my way around things, but honestly, you know, I'm learning as I go. So if anybody's feeling discouraged because things just seem overwhelming or hard or it's hard to get going and the reselling or getting a YouTube channel or whatever it is that you're doing, I wanna encourage you, just plug through it, fumble around, make mistakes, you'll get through and you'll learn something on the other side that you can decide, hey, is this for me or maybe it's not? And just keep going. Like, okay, come on, do the dory. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Just keep swimming. All right. <laughs> With that, have a spectacular rest of your day, whatever time it is that you're watching this, and go be profitable and make it fun. We'll see you on the next one.